Anatoly. What? Listen, you're the old one here. Why don't you tell me what really happened? Old? Watch your mouth, kid. Well, I don't know the whole truth, but I'll tell you what I can. They say that not long before the catastrophe struck, people all over the world began to find strange things, stones more often than not, which emitted unidentified particles. As for where these things came from, nobody could say for certain. A theory almost immediately emerged that it was this radiation that led to animals mutating. An international organization was formed, as was oh so fashionable back then, the so-called Worldwide Scientific Council. This organization studied how this unknown radiation caused living organisms to mutate. And of course, the first thing that they did was think up a name for the particles and for the radiation itself, NDP radiation. There were still a few mutated animals back then, and they were like cute kittens compared to the beasts that roam the wastelands now. But the first research projects confirmed that this NDP radiation causes serious mutations in animals. As for people, for some reason, the radiation affected them entirely differently. Even a small amount applied to damaged tissue caused it to regenerate far more quickly. The body quickly recovered from illnesses, and even serious wounds could be healed using nothing but this radiation. On top of that, many other positive attributes were observed in practically all areas of science. The scientists couldn't have been happier. It was like manna from heaven to them. The discoveries came one after the other. New instruments and medicine. They learned to use sources of the radiation as power sources. How do you think some devices still work to this day? And thought up all kinds of other uses for it. But then, one fine day, the catastrophe struck. I was still just a kid back then. All I remember is multicolored rays appearing in the sky. Then everything suddenly went dark. I heard heavy peals of thunder, the heaviest I'd ever heard. The wind picked up. Stones fell from the sky. It was terrifying. The cities were in the grip of panic and chaos. The people trampled each other, running wherever they could, just trying to find cover. It was a horrible sight. My mother and I hid in our basement, and my father tried to save as many people as he could. Then, it all suddenly stopped. The night of nightmares was over, and day broke. Wow! And then what happened? Just listen and don't interrupt. Many people died that night. All the largest cities were destroyed. All that we call civilization had turned to dust. It was like we'd gone back to the Stone Age in a single instant, and all humanity's problems disappeared. Everyone in the world suddenly had the same goal, to survive. That was when the monsters came. They surged into the cities that remained whole in huge packs, destroying everything alive in their path. In those days, our already diminished species became even smaller. But there were cities that could withstand the monsters. The military was able to lead the people. They began to unite, protect their ruined cities from the mutants, and find other survivors. Thus was the Confederation born. One of the Confederation's primary goals back then was to find scientists who worked on the WSC projects. They even managed to find surviving laboratories where scientists still labor away to this day. Thanks to the scientists, they managed to partially restore the research performed on NDP radiation before the catastrophe and even to make use of some of the technologies. For example, the scientists managed to create special NDP concentrators which alter the radiation to form something like a protective field. The mutants fear the field like fire and won't enter it. That's how the domes above our cities were created. They protect us from the monsters. There's one more thing that the old world left to us, teleporters. As far as I know, it's some sort of old military tech. Only a few of them were put into testing. The initial plan for the teleporters was this, to provide fast troop movement, deliver ammunition, and transport to the battlefield 
and treat the wounded. But the scientists were unable to iron out all the defects before the catastrophe hit. So only one function works, transporting the wounded. And even that doesn't work right. It doesn't pick up the wounded, just the dead. And not everywhere. Only in a zone of reliable reception, and even the transportation process itself is a big gamble. You're lucky if something is just missing from your backpack after you teleport. You could turn up missing an arm or a leg, or even not turn up at all. Long story short, those things are dangerous. I remember once having the bad luck of finding a herd of wild boar outside the city. Not surprisingly, they trampled me in three seconds, and the transporter teleported me without my clothes. And I remember feeling how it put me back together piece by piece. An unforgettable sensation, believe me. Although the daredevils in the arena use the transporters every day, and they seem fine, still alive. Quiet. Do you hear that? Hear what? There's something there in the bushes.